Welcome again. Our next topic on digital design course is the design of sequential circuits. Design of a sequential circuit is more difficult than the design of combinational logic circuit. However, in both cases, the design starts from the circuit specifications or tables and ends up with the logic circuit or the circuit diagram. Before moving to the design procedure steps, we should know several things such as excitation tables, state reduction, and state assignment. First, we start with excitation tables. Here is the general structure of any flip-flop. It has one input like in D or T flip-flops and two inputs like in RS or JK flip-flops, the flip-flop basic circuit and two outputs, Q of T and not Q of T. You already know that in the characteristic table, we have the input or inputs and the present state. And we have to find the next state. So in the characteristic table here, we have the input or inputs, and we know Q of T, and we have to find Q of T plus one. During the design process, we usually know the transition from present state to the next state, and wish to find the flip-flop input conditions that will cause the required transition. For this reason, we need a table that lists the required inputs for a given change of state. Such a list is called excitation table. So in the excitation table, we know the present state, Q of T, and the next state, Q of T plus one. And we have to find out the inputs that causes this transition. So during the design, we know Q of T and Q of T plus one and we have to find out these inputs. This is the general structure of any excitation table and the difference between the characteristic and excitation tables. Next, we will move to the excitation tables of the most common used flip-flops. First, SR flip-flops. Here is the graphic symbol. We have two inputs S and R and two outputs Q, not Q. Here is the state table for the SR flip-flop. And here we have the characteristic equation, Q of T plus one equals S or not R Q of T, provided that S and R equals zero, because on S and R one one, the next state is undefined. How to find out the excitation table for the SR flip-flop? Suppose that the present state is zero and the next state is zero. What are the S and R that causes this transition? The first one is the store state, S and R, zero, zero. And the reset state, R1 and S0, which means that in this case, S should be zero and R do not care here. Next, from zero to one, this is the set state. So S1 and R0. From one to zero, this is the reset state, zero, one. Now from one to one, it is either the store state, zero, zero, or the set state, one, zero. So R is zero and S do not care. Here we have the excitation table for the SR flip-flop. Next, JK flip-flop. Here we have the graphic symbol for the JK flip-flop to input J and K, Q not Q. And we already know the state table for the JK flip-flop. Here is the state table. We have the input JK and the Q of T plus one is expressed by means of inputs and the present state. And here we have the characteristic equation for the JK flip-flop, J not Q of T, 
or not k q of t find out the excitation table for the jk flip flop here we have the present state and the next state and we have to find out j and k from zero zero we can have store state or reset reset means zero one so on j zero and here x next from zero to one here we either have the set state one zero or store complement one one so j is one and k do not care next for one zero it's either a reset state zero one or store complement one one so j do not care and k one and the last row one one it is a store state zero zero or a set state one zero so here we have x zero so this is the excitation table for the jk flip-flop next the deep flip flop here is the graphic symbol for the deep flip flop and here is the state table you remember that q of t plus one equals to d and here is the characteristic equation for the d flip flop it's easy to find out that d in this case equals q of t plus one here is the excitation table for the d flip flop now regarding t flip flop here is the graphic symbol for t flip flop here we have the state table you you remember if t is zero then we have store state and if t is one store complement and this is the characteristic equation for the t flip flop now regarding the excitation table on zero zero we have t zero zero one then t was one and here one and from one to one zero here is the excitation table for the t flip flop now regarding state reduction and the design process must consider the problem of minimization the cost of the final circuit the two most obvious cost reductions are reductions in the number of flip flops and the number of gates the process of eliminating the equivalent or redundant states from a state table or diagram is known as state reduction two states are said to be equivalent if for each member of the set of inputs they give exactly the same output and send the circuit either to the same state or to an equivalent state when two states are equivalent one of them can be removed without altering the input output relationship to demonstrate that suppose that we have two states a and b and suppose we have only one input x and under the input x the state a goes to state c and generates the output y and suppose that the state b under the input x transits to the state c and generate the same output y then the two states A and B are equivalent and we can remove one of them. Really, not only this case, but even if A under the input X transits to state C and generates the output Y and B to D under X and generate Y and C and D are equivalent, then also states A and B are equivalent. So again, two states are equivalent if under the same input or inputs, they transits to the same next state or to an equivalent states. Then we say that the two states are equivalent and we can remove one of them. Suppose, for example, that we have the following state table with the states a b c d e and f and we have one input 
and the next state under x is zero is b f d f a b and under the input x one to these next states and these outputs are generated on x zero and on x one you can see here that state a and f under the input x zero they transit to the state b and under the input x one they transit to the state c and here the output generated is one equals to this one and here zero and here zero then the states a and f are equivalent and we can remove one of them suppose for example we remove f and we replace the occurrence of f in the table by a here we have here we had f so now we have the equivalent state of f if you examine the table again you can find out that states b and e are equivalent as well because they transit to the same next state under the same inputs and they generate the same outputs so we can remove state for example e and replace the occurrence of e by b and here is the reduced state table as you see in the original table we had six states and here we have four states if we design the circuit using the original table then we need three flip-flops however we here need only two flip-flops a reduction in the number of states may or may not result in a reduction in the number of flip-flops suppose for example that we have 14 states and after reduction we have 11 states here we need four flip-flops and here as well we need four flip-flops however if the number of states for example was nine and we reduced to seven here we need four flip-flops but here we need only three flip-flops it's easy to note that if we have a, a layers of powers of two here then if we reduce the number of states from one layer to another then the number of flip-flops required for the design is reduced however if we reduce the number of states and we are in the same layer then the number of flip-flops is not reduced in the design procedure assigning the state's binary values is called state assignments for example in this table we have four states so we need two bits to assign each state we can assign a with 0 0 0 1 1 c 1 0 and d 1 1 and here is our state table after state assignment really another assignment can be made as well now armed with this knowledge flip-flops excitation table state reduction state assignment we can move to part two of this topic to the design of sequential circuits for now thank you